It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody. Starring the irrepressible Andrew Bernstein and the redoubtable Robert Begley. I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are indubitably Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I am doing great, Andy. And happy Veterans Day for those in the United States. And happy yes. to share yes. the achievements of one of the greatest veterans in American history, William Tecumseh Sherman. Boy, what a yes. hero. Yes. H happy Veterans Day, everybody. Uh, anybody who served, uh, trying to protect freedom in the United yes. States, you know, we absolutely salute you. And in honor of that on Veterans Day, you know, we do one, like you said, Robert, we honor one of the great uh, military commanders in U.S. history, William Tecumseh Sherman. Um, <laughs> may not be considered a hero in Georgia or South Carolina to this day, but... Uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we'll get to that. We, we, we sure will. And what, what interesting little tidbit about, about him, Robert, before we get into Sherman's life, is one of the military heroes we've already uh, honored, G George Patton, studied uh sherman's my sherman. memoirs and his campaigns and actually yes. i i think he actually may have may have gone to the locations the battle sites you know and just you know filtering in his head you know yeah the the various mm -hmm. the, the way the way sherman the sherman strategy the way he conducted his campaigns who knows pat may may have believed he was sherman in a, in a previous life <laughs> i'm not i'm not sure i'm not sure about that <laughs> that's possible <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sherman Sherman is considered one of the one of the first modern generals, maybe you know, maybe, maybe the first modern general. And, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. But we should start start at the beginning, right? Uh, his dates were eighteen twenty to eighteen ninety one. Born in Ohio, was that was Grant, Grant was from mm -hmm. Ohio also, wasn't he? I think. Ooh, I don't know. I don't remember about Grant, but all right, you know, talking about tidbits, right, well, 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 if you know, yeah. Well, we'll do a hero show episode on Grant too. He's another yes. hero. We'll we'll, yes. we'll we'll get all the we'll get Absolutely. all the data. We'll, yeah, we'll get all the data yeah. uh, on mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and Sherman Sherman went to West Point, didn't he? He went to West Point, and uh, actually, before that, it's inter interesting childhood. First of all, let's start with his name. His father oh, yeah. named him yeah. Tecumseh. Okay, he wasn't even actually William wasn't his first name till he was nine. Till after his father died. So he named him after the great uh, Shawnee chief Tecumseh, which of course was not, <laughs> that was not looked highly upon by, by, by a lot of people. And Sherman's father died when he was nine years old, leaving his widow 11 children. So Sherman was one of many who had to, was basically uh, given to a neighbor, family friend and neighbor, uh, Ewing, who was an attorney, high-powered attorney, <clears throat> and uh, paved the way for, you know, pull, pull some strings to get Sherman into West Point when he was mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I think, 16, 17 years old. And he, uh, he was good at math, he was good at drawing, he was good at uh, chemistry. And also he was a little bit rambunctious. So he'd get all these demerits for doing these things that pulled, pulled him a little bit back. So that's why he wasn't like the total, like total top soldier in the class. But, uh, but yeah, West Point was a good experience for him. Yeah. I, I remember reading about that and yeah, he, yeah, he was a very good student. And they said he was, was, uh, excelled in natural philosophy also, which back then, that's, that's right. Uh, prob probably included as much science as it did you know philosophy but but yeah mm -hmm. he was not one for he was not one to obey you know obey orders he was not one to follow the rules so you know no. it's, uh, there's a lot of you know there's an interesting that i mean there's a lot of people go on to great things to do that but the military may seem like a a, a funny choice for somebody who uh who's not good at, at uh, you know, at, at discipline and, 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 and following orders. Mm -hmm. But then I guess if you're in a position where you give the orders, I, I guess you don't have to, you don't have to follow them. Right. That's true. Uh, <laughs> that, that is true. So then he moves on uh, by the time he's 20, he's already engaged in wars. He becomes second Lieutenant. And then he's, they bring him down to Florida, which he loved. 
he absolutely loved uh, being in Florida. And uh, between the, the, the geography of the land, but there was the war, the Seminole War that was happening at the time. And he, you know, he did what he had to do dur during that war. So he, you know, increasingly advanced. And something else was that he became, he learned about, so this was huge in his life. So Ohio, if you know, geography of America is in the North, but he learned about the South, the Southern ways, the geography of Florida, of Georgia, of the Carolinas. And this was- And don't, don't forget, don't forget, Robert, the Ohio River separates Ohio from Kentucky, which was- Kentucky, was that's South, right. right. Cincinnati. Right? Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati's that's on the yeah. Ohio River, right across from Covington, Kentucky, I, I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Ohio's not that that's far. That's right. Ohio is not that far from yeah. the, uh, the border. The border states that, that you know, Kentucky was considered a border state, and then and That's eventually right. Kentucky, Kentucky did join the Confederacy, didn't it? I can't remember my my history. I think it did. I'm almost certain that that it did. Yeah, I you know oh, okay. what, let me not say for sure, but I'm almost certain okay. that right. it did because yeah, it, yeah. Right. <laughs> there but, were a lot of there were a lot uh, of, a lot of slave owners and pro slavery pro slavery people there. And it was part of yeah, and and again with the border states, there was a lot of bo on both sides. You know that was the thing about yeah. border states that the usually that's where kind of even where the most violence is. And when he turned uh, about twenty eight, he goes to California because he so he wanted to be a military man, but he fell in love with a woman who basically his stepsister, a daughter of one of the Hewings. And she, the father, uh, uh, Thomas Ewing and the wife, they were not against a military career for Sherman because they just didn't think it was reputable and a good, a good living. So he goes out to California and uh, lands in San Francisco right before it becomes uh, named San Francisco and the gold rush is happening and he gets involved this in banking. Let me just see well, yeah. one thing. Uh, to get to San Francisco, then he had to go on a journey around Cape Horn, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, getting around, getting around the country in the 1850s was tough. You know, no transcontinental yeah, it, railroads it, yet, no airplanes, obviously, no highways. Uh, a lot of it was in the West, was still Indian territory, was you know, fill, filled with hostiles. That's right. Uh, no, no Panama Absolutely Canal, right. so no, but no Panama Canal. So it's like a six month journey at least. To get to the West yes. Coast via via Cape Horn, often dangerous. And uh, I yep. read somewhere that did Sherman survive several shipwrecks? I mean, uh, I read a couple. <laughs> he did. A couple and, of and interesting. Another future hero show. Um, uh, Vanderbilt was looking to actually cut something through. Vanderbilt wanted to have um, go through Nicaragua. He actually put some railroads in Nicaragua to shorten the distance. And uh, after the gold rush, that's actually what he did. So a lot of the gold came from San Francisco to New York via Vanderbilt's uh, transportation. But in this case, yeah, Sherman, he he took the long he took the long way uh, around. Yeah, that's to the San scenic Francisco. route to, from New York to San Francisco <laughs> around Cape Horn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he fails in the business. Basically, the business goes out. the the bank The banking firm goes out of business, and then he goes to New York. And then, even in New York, it fails. So he's realizing that banking and business are not, you know, even though he kind of wants to succeed in that, he it's not happening. And right around this time is the Mexican War. So we're into the late eighteen forties. <clears throat> by this time. So <clears throat> since he's born in 1820, we just add, add the years. He's in his late 20s by this time. And he doesn't see any action. He, he, as a guy, as a military man, if you don't see action, you're kind of disappointed because that's the, the, the more the more you fight and win, that's the way to get your uh, reputation up. So yeah, he was one of the few uh, he was one of the few leading generals in the US Civil War that didn't have combat experience in the Mexican War. Yes. Right? True. True. Most of them did. Mo uh, yeah. you know, pick a name of somebody famous and they that was their training ground in effect right. 
what was the Mexican right. War. And so then we're getting to the uh, late 1850s and what's happening in the United States. We said it last week in the, in the Lincoln episode, Kansas, Nebraska, the, 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 the country is getting more and more ready for war. The divisions between the two, between North and South are becoming more and more eminent. And when the, and now uh, Sherman is in the military, he's in Louisiana, uh, Baton Rouge. When the war breaks out and what do you do? You're in the South. Are you going to stay in the South and fight against the North? Not Sherman. No. <laughs> and, and as no. we mentioned last time, you know, we, we uh, last time about Robert E. Lee, who couldn't draw a sword against a Virginian and same with Sam Houston in Texas. So some of the best generals would not, they were states rights guys, like you said. So, uh, but Sherman, he goes, you know, he, he makes up his mind that, yeah, he's, go he's going to fight for the North. Not exactly impressed with Lincoln in the beginning because Lincoln. Well, you know, we, we should um, just, we, let me just, let me just yeah, jump in here ahead. for a second, yeah. Robert, because it, what an irony, Sherman is the first superintendent of the school that develops into Louisiana State University. You know, a leading, LSU, yes. a leading, leading mm -hmm. LSU, a leading college in the deep south. This is not, this is not the, you know, anywhere near the border states. This is, this is the deep south. And I, think I got a great quote from one of one of Sherman's friends here that I that I that I want to yeah. that I want to read. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. professors at at the, at the school that would, will become LSU uh, was an ardent secessionist. And when and when yep. I think what South when South Carolina secedes, yeah, South Carolina secession. Sherman burst out crying uh, because he 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 sees he sees what's coming. His friend uh, Professor Boyd, and this is from and this guy's a southern, uh, not, not just a sympathizer. Boyd is an ardent secessionist. Listen to what he he says. His account of Sherman what Sherman said, Sherman speaking to Boyd, as recounted by Boyd. You people of the South don't know what you are doing. This country will oh, yeah. be drenched in blood, and God only knows how it will end. It is all folly, madness, a crime against civilization. You people speak so lightly of war. You don't know what you're talking about. War is a terrible thing. You mistake, too, the people of the North. They are a peaceable people, but an earnest people, and they will fight. They are not going to mm -hmm. let this country be destroyed without a mighty effort to save it. Besides. Where are your men and appliances of war to contend against them? The North can make a steam engine, locomotive, or rail, railway car. Hardly a yard of cloth or pair of shoes can you make. You are rushing into war with one of the most powerful, ingeniously mechanical, and determined people on earth right at your door. You are bound to fail. Only in your spirit and determination are you, are you prepared for war. In all else, you are totally unprepared with a bad cause to start with. At first, you will make headway, mm -hmm. but as your limited resources begin to fail, shut out from the markets of Europe as you will be, your cause will begin to wane. If your people will but stop and think, they must see in the end that you will surely fail. Wow. Sherman. How prescient. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He, he, he called it on every... On every issue, he called it. What was going to happen? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and above all, the horror of the, the bloodiest war in, in U.S. history, because everybody killed on both sides was an American. Yeah, and we'll talk numbers later on, and and how efficient he was with with the numbers of deaths. Uh, so yeah, once the war breaks out, Lincoln he calls for seventy five thousand volunteers for a three month term. And which Sherman, Sherman, which Sherman like was, he was ridiculed. <laughs> this is not a three month war, Mr. President. No. This is going to be a long war. He says war. it's going to be a long war. And he says it's like putting out, a, trying to put out a burning house with a squirt gun. That's right. Sherman had a great way with, he with did. trenches. He you did. Know, he, he, pithy, he, yeah. pithy remarks, aphorisms. Right, right. right. And, <laughs> and, so initially he's disappointed in Lincoln, you know, with this kind of, of course, Lincoln was in over his head. Nobody, nobody, you know, you mentioned it last yeah. time. Nobody knew what would come, but 
if more people yeah, listen even to at, even at even at Germany, a tower reading really six on. foot four right even at a tower reading <laughs> six foot four it was over lincoln said oh would, would have been over the head of any human being right yeah no, no president yeah. like we said last week no president came into office having to contend with the forces and and uh, you know the uh all the negative things mm -hmm. that lincoln had to contend with. that's right that's right yeah so the war starts and he is um he's in the battle of bull run the first battle of bull run may 1861 and he is uh a bullet grazes his knee and his shoulder and basically um he meets up with grant so it's, it's the first time that they meet up together and because he didn't he, he didn't um he wasn't that successful at that uh during the first Battle of Bull Run, which uh, the North did not win, he sinks into depression and melancholy. And they're realizing that this fam his family had this uh, uh, history as well. So it wasn't like a, a singular episode. And um, now the media is starting to call him. It, it, it starts out his long relationship with the media. Who he totally despised, uh, often with good, <laughs> with good. Imagine reason. if he was alive. Imagine if he was alive today. Oh, Imagine if he was alive today. <laughs> deal with CNN, or, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're calling we, him insane. Him. They're calling him yeah. all these names, and that he's not built. You know, he doesn't have he doesn't have the the uh, um, character to follow through and he goes away for a couple of months he goes back to ohio and and sort of regroups uh, for some time which was important to his his psyche uh, there's there's no doubt about that and but then um he goes uh sometime later he's in one of the biggest battles which was shiloh uh in western tennessee Blood and that bad. was where that was that was yeah that was that was a yeah, bloodbath. Blood blood yeah, that was a surprise attack. He wasn't ready, and uh, the Confederates, you know, they're they're gaining ground. I mean, we mentioned briefly last week that everybody thought this would be a quick war, but one of the problems was that there was no real leadership on the Union side. All of these leading uh, commanders were not as committed. They were not as, especially morally committed. Uh, and so there were like 19 yeah, I, different I, I, divisions doing things yeah, scattered you know, you know, over. Robert, you know, I'm not, I'm no military historian, but it seems to me just as a dilettante here that until Grant and Sherman come to the fore yes. mid-war 1863, the best commanders yep. were, on the, were on the Southern side. You know, Lee, Lee obviously, on, yep. and, and, and and others, yeah. others as well. Yeah, yeah, and and in the West, and and one of the things that um, that both Sherman and Grant knew, but Grant called the Mississippi the spine, the spinal column of the country, and so mm -hmm. if they could take that, if they could take the Mississippi, and we mentioned this last time uh, about the victory at Vicksburg, first the siege, and then the victory, and then right. Things just changed after that. The 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 impetus after that, the momentum yeah, the, after the victory of Vicksburg, Grant is given command, full command of the entire. Lincoln promotes him, and then Grant decides yeah, to go north to pursue. Yeah, go ahead. Lee. Yeah, Vicksburg was critical because one, Vicksburg is what is is in the state of Mississippi on the Mississippi, right? It was a, it was a southern bastion, and uh, with the fall of Vicksburg, now the Union controlled the Mississippi, which was a terrible yes. blow to the Confederacy. You know, shipping the you yeah. know, to, the Confederate shipping, and also it, it uh, basically isolated Arkansas and Texas, you know, from the from the rest of the right. of the Confederacy. And it also yeah. third, it opened up uh, the campaign for Sherman to march on, uh, you know, the the long campaign to to take uh, Atlanta. And then, of course, yes. the march to the sea that yeah. we will uh, that we will get yeah, to. And, in and, time. and 
it, it was hard to crack. Vicksburg was set up geographically yeah. that it was right. very easy to defend. So it took Sherman a long time, Sherman and, and Grant, a long time, but eventually they succeeded. And then, so as, as uh, Grant goes north pursuing, pursuing um, Lee, he lets Sherman basically take over in the south. So he goes to Chattanooga, victory there. And Atlanta is the next stop. And this is where you mentioned right at the beginning. So the thing people know most about Sherman is Atlanta. I mentioned the movie Gone with the Wind. And we, ha we have a, a, a regular uh, viewer named Gary who corrected me. He, he, he often corrects me when I make mistakes in the show. But he, but he has a clip of the Gone with the Wind where they actually do say Sherman's name. I said they call him the juggernaut. And there's a, there's a beautiful, like, 30 second uh, clip about Sherman's impact in the film. Well, why, would, why, why would, yeah. on this topic, we should men mention Margaret Mitchell. Uh, Gone with the Wind's a great novel. It's a great novel. It is. Whatever you think of the politics involved, literarily, it's a brilliant novel. And it was made yes. into, a, into, a, into a great movie. And uh, yes. Burning of Atlanta, obviously. And that long pullback, this became famous, a long pullback from all those wounded and dying soldiers at the train station. It's just, you know, what was yeah. that? Oh, it's just it's, it's, it's That's hard in hard. the montage. Actually, that's in the montage that I'll, I'll put it in into the uh, into the YouTube link so that people can see that even if they don't see the whole movie, but you do see Sherman's impact. And but OK, so here's where he comes up with this idea about breaking their spirit, breaking the spirit of the South. And how do you do this head to head? Combat frontal attacks are not the way the, you, the 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 country has been fighting that way indecisively for you know uh, more than two years, and Sherman's thought is make the people pay the people who are in their you know mansions having tea parties while their sons or their or their neighbors' sons are out dying. He wanted to bring the war to those who. Thought war was just this abstract thing. So <clears throat> destroy the destroy the infrastructure, stop the railroads. They even called them like Sherman bows. That uh, his men would tie up the the railroad lines so the trains couldn't come in, in and out of Atlanta. And um, he actually, there's there's some evidence that he didn't burn. That that actually the South burned some some of the uh, did some of the burning to blame it on him to to cause hostility to have the media against him, and also to try to trap him because if he couldn't get to railroads, they thought he, he his army would starve, and that was a big part of a big part of his uh, his ingenuity because mm -hmm. by cutting off the you know by cutting off. <clears throat> the railroads he had by this time he had like 62,000 uh an army of 62,000 and he said we're just going to cut straight across the south not saying how you know that was another one of his things was not to, not showing his hand uh, savannah was the goal which is on uh on the atlantic on Ocean, the atlantic on the yeah. coast and and so he had cut a swath 60 miles long to live off the land now Sherman, because he knew the South, he had he had lived in the South, and he he got a record of all of the stock that was available, and and his soldiers basically lived off the land, which was radical. Nobody expected this. Meanwhile, he's out of communication with everybody in the North. The media is saying, you know, he's starved. Don't worry about him. You know, it's it's they're doing what the media does is distorting the facts. <clears throat> And then, of so, course, he makes it, you know, he, yeah, some things never change, right, Andy? <laughs> yeah, they just get worse. But, you know, before we discuss the March to the Sea, Robert, um, yeah, go ahead. you should go say, ahead. Something, say something about the Atlanta campaigns. Because Sherman's campaign yeah, to take Atlanta is, is considered to be brilliant. The way he, he outmaneuvered, you know, the, the Confederate generals, <clears throat> avoiding, yes. avoiding, avoiding major conflict. You know, backtracking, circumventing, so you know, and outmaneuvering the 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 defending Confederate army. Uh, I forget what they Johnston. call it. There's a yeah. name. Yeah, John, but I forget what they call that. This type of this type of warfare. Uh, 
but but Sherman but Sherman mastered it, um, and yeah. uh, and then and, and then does take Atlanta, which of course is a major blow to the Confederacy, yeah. not just not just in terms of strategic location, but pride. I mean, you know, the, the Southerners were a little cocky, you know, where we where the warriors, where the tough guys, and they, and, yes. and and now we can't defend Atlanta. You know, one of the crown jewels of the, you know, of the mm -hmm. state of Georgia and the Confederacy. Uh, this mm -hmm. was a definite blow. Yeah, I mean, the 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 late great John Lewis, John David Lewis, he'll point it out that you know brilliantly that, that the way article for yeah, TOS, that, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, at his book that was nothing less than victory, right? That mm -hmm. um, the, the way to win a war is to break the fighting spirit of of the enemy, and Sherman right. understood that. Sherman understood that, and he uh, taking Atlanta was huge. And then the march to the sea, the the mm -hmm. swath of destruction, and and this is a, a agricultural agricultural country, you know. Yes. Um, and he's, yes. he's 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 burning the breadbasket of the Confederacy. You know, yeah. he's eliminating the, to a significant degree their their food supply. And you know, this yeah. war is hell. Sherman said. I, I remember years ago I was talking to somebody who. Kind of sympathized with the South. I mean, maybe had too much of a gone with the wind mentality. And 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 mm -hmm. I said, "Your war is hell." And this person said to me, "Well, he made it that way. Uh, Sherman made it that way, which is a you know popular view of Sherman to this day in the South. I think very certainly popular. Was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly was in mm -hmm. the past. The point is, he broke the back of the Confederacy, thereby foreshortening yes. the war. And when you when you That's when right. you shorten the war, you save lives in the long run, especially save. your own guys, yes. but people on the yes. other side. Harry Truman did something similar in World War Two, and it was the right call. It was you know it yes. was the right call. Uh, so anyway, I to so, to totally agree, Andy. And and yeah. actually, another thing about Atlanta, that was what, when news came to the North. Boom! Lincoln gets reelected. Because this was November. Oh this, yeah, that's right. Was, uh, that's right. It, it was a that's big right, part of, because Lincoln yeah, was in very right. much jeopardy yeah. of not getting reelected because the war was dragging on, and and what they thought would be again a, a short, quick war, it was dragging on. But once Sherman took Atlanta, he became a household name, mm -hmm. and that everybody knew him, north and south. All of a sudden, who now Sherman is is on the map and, and by the way fiery guy who read his red hair you know talk about howard rook but that was like a part of his nature like this temper they back then they alluded it to this fiery temper you know if you're a redhead so sherman lived up to that as well he, even like you know f physical characteristics but yeah so two you, other you points reminded there me. Were that you reminded me that's Go right ahead. mcclellan was the democratic candidate right for the, yes. for the presidency in 1864. And a lot of people, maybe most people, thought he was going to win, including Lincoln. I think Lincoln thought that he was going to lose that election. There. And yeah, and mm -hmm. it, yeah, and it was definitely... And, then, and compromise and, and have a peace treaty, and then slavery still exists. Right. You know, basically, right. if McClellan ran, if McClellan won, slavery would not have been eradicated. It's that simple. Right. Because right. they were not going right. to. They wanted to end the war. To them, ending the war was more important than um the moral principle of ending slavery and upholding the constitution <clears throat> right so as right. and it was definitely it was Martin, definitely sure but it was definitely sherman's victory at atlanta yes. and taking atlanta that yes. put lincoln over the top that's that's widely that's right that's widely acknowledged it. That, that lincoln knows yeah. what he's doing lincoln knows what he's doing he's yeah. got the right guys in in his in general in generalship now and, and the war can mm -hmm. be won and yeah so okay yeah so Lincoln's and as, so as he's they're marching as they're they're marching through the south when slaves see his army marching they run away from their masters they call him the they call him the the new moses or aaron you know like yeah, he the right, modern right. <laughs> they're just thankful and and he can't handle all this so he's like he's got enough to feed his yes. army and he has to feed his army so um you know there's there's we could we could criticize him for not having an enlightened view of blacks at the time. He was not alone uh, in this. He, I think oh, yeah. he did evolve as as he got older, but um, but nevertheless, he was Moses to them. So one thing, if anybody in, in any student of history, any black person today, has to know the the, the psychological significance of Sherman marching through with where. where 
the slaves just run away from them and the masters are helpless. Okay, they're completely helpless and paralyzed. They're not going to chase the slaves and say, you know, morally, you belong to me. Legally and morally, you belong to me. I, I, that fact is not, is totally underestimated in, in Sherman's impact. Yeah, so no, you're, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Several points here. Uh, yeah, Sherman at that time had a retrograde view, you know, that blacks were inferior to whites. Although, according to firsthand accounts of the black leaders and clergy who met with him, he was very respectful, you know, in in, in yes. his dealings with them. Uh, but la as yeah. later on, as 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 he aged, uh, he became more and more uh, friendly towards uh, you know the the free, the freed slaves, and more and more convinced that you know they were be American citizens you know, with, without any difficulty. In fact, he was he was had been trying to negotiate that that old what is a forty acres and a mule. Uh, That's right. Legend. That was his. Yeah, that was his yeah, idea. That was mm -hmm. Sherman's initiative. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. the land from these white plantation owners, and in, in some type of, of justice, his reparations when it made sense, because the, the people who perpetrated yep. the horror were still alive, and the people who were victimized by the horror were alive. Take the land from the plantation owners, give it to the former slaves, and and set them up as landowners. You know, and, uh, and forty thousand slaves. Farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he, yeah. he, he became more convinced, you know, that, that black uh, freed slaves could be, you know, citizens of the Republic and farmers and, you know, and uh, productive mm -hmm. citizens and, and, and everything. But yeah, you're right. The psychological impact on the one, the black population of the South is Sherman devastated the Confederacy, you know, and, and just the, the slaves were, you know, so many of them, thousands of them were ebullient uh and yeah. run you know flee in the plantations and the, the devastating impact on the plantation owners who realize now that that this system is gone with the wind you know, you know the market <laughs> mitchell's title is is that the system's over yes. it's finished it's done it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's yeah. gone with the wind uh, and properly so yeah. it, was, it was you know slavery is hellish is human anywhere on earth and it certainly has no place yep. in a republic founded on the principle yeah. uh, of, of inalienable right to liberty written beautifully by a slave owner, Thomas Jefferson, but uh, but Jefferson is mm -hmm. right, nevertheless, that each individual has the inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it's either gender, regardless of race, full individual, individualism yep. says be a born, right? And full individualism, you know, awaits, mm -hmm. Ayn, Ayn Rand gives it its full, its full explication, That's it's just right. being born. But Jefferson's yeah. right, nevertheless, despite being a hypocrite, uh, he's right in a very important way. And, uh, uh, slavery, slavery now. The slave system has gone with the wind, in, you know, in the in the United States. And Sherman, it was gone. Sherman had a big, yeah. Sherman played a big role in 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 the physical devastation of the plantation system and the psychological yeah. crushing of of uh, belief in that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And, about that. and before him, that will to win, that uh, the the commanders, prior commanders, did not have that. They did not have that will to completely destroy, to break the spirit. They were about winning battles. And Sherman yeah. was about winning the war. And you win the war by breaking the spirit of your enemy. Uh, and sadly, you you know, you mentioned Truman. I th in my opinion, that's the last time America actually ever did that, was, was break the spirit of the enemy <clears throat> to assure victory and then move on. Because... Wars, we know they would just crop up again, five, 10 years. They would just, the losers would regroup. It's just as old as, as the hills and regroup and restart the war uh, again. Right. But when the spirit is broken, that's a different, we're now in a different game. So the war is so over, after, then, right? The war, yeah, the war is over. Yeah. Makes it to December 21st, 22nd, makes it, he, he makes it to Savannah, telegraphs, first time there's any communication from him. Mr. President, I offer you 75,000 bales of, the city of Savannah, I offer you 75,000 bales of cotton, ammunition, this and that. Can you imagine Lincoln's As a Christmas joy. gift, right? He says as a Christmas gift. Yeah, exactly. That's what he says to Lincoln, yeah. so I offer it as a Christmas yeah. gift. Yeah, what yeah. what a what a um, you know while again while the media is saying he starved you know he we haven't heard from him in, in in two weeks he starved out but through that six week you know November through December uh, late December that's what they did so now they're done yeah and also Gorgeous. we should we should say we should say Sherman took pains to not harm the civilian population 
you yes. know. Yes, thank you, Andy. Uh, thank was, you. He, yeah, Very yeah, good he, point. Yeah, he was, Very yeah, good he point. was destroying the wherewithal, the material wherewithal of the Confederacy to wage war. He was not making war on Southern civilians. And even if he did burn Atlanta, I don't, I don't know what history is, but he, he gave orders to evacuate the city. Right, he did not want to get yeah, and, to and, and safe passage. Place. Very yeah. good point, and and safe passage. He offered safe passage to get out of the city, and uh, made sure his soldiers did not attack the women. Okay, in any war, what is the what is the first thing? Oh uh, yeah, do? rape the, the women, women. Of course, that's what the soldiers <laughs> often do. Make yeah. the men oh, yeah, slaves, and, and yeah, yeah. And rape, rape Sherman the women. Right, had orders if they if anyone in anyone under his command did that they would pay they would definitely pay the price and and so the he meant business you know, yeah i was just again the moral the principle rape, the, yeah i was just reading yeah, about the rape right. of their king you know and by japanese forces the rape of their king yeah. in the in china during world war ii and it just makes your hair stand on and this is and this is often you know the nazis did it to the russians you know the communists did it to the germans you know uh this is often what war yeah. is like you kill everybody yeah. and rape the women uh and yes, Sherman did did his very best to to you know uh, eliminate that. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. That's right. That's right. So we're done with uh, Georgia. Which, by the way, from his prior experience with Georgia, he didn't the, as much as the the as much as the images of them being like a fiercely Confederate you know the center of the Confederacy aside from uh, Richmond. A lot of Georgians were against the war they were they were one of the latter states to secede they really had their 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 arm twisted by the next state uh south carolina which is just north of georgia and sherman's like we're going where this thing all started <laughs> yeah let me at, let me, let me yeah, time, yeah let me just let me just jump in here for a second yeah go ahead because yeah. sherman's now a hero and there's some talk about you know promoting him and everything and possibly him replacing Grant. oh yeah it's great and i, and I just yeah, i just yeah. want to read i just want to read this quote, this quote. i love i know what you're going to say it's great <laughs> yeah, yeah this, this is classic you know sherman said quote general grant is a great general i know him well he stood by me when i was crazy and i stood by him when he was drunk and now sir we stand by each other always <laughs> I absolutely I this, love this that quote. Stuff. This is great stuff. This is great stuff. <laughs> and, and Grant so, actually I called. I don't know. Uh, so don't know if Grant actually Grant will, wanted or, Sherman but, to 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 take steamboats up the Atlantic right. to meet him in Virginia, and Sherman's like, "No, I got some business to no, do with, we're with gonna South fight Carolina." Fight our way. Yeah, we're going to fight our way through the Carolinas. <laughs> And South Carolina, yes. a lot of the Union guys, including Sherman, had a particular animus towards South Carolina right. because they were the cradle of the Confederates. And they they, they fought right. their way through South Carolina and uh, Columbia, South Carolina burned. Right, this is another controversy. They anyway, burned the next so, big, the yeah. capital. They burned yeah. Fort Sumter, which is where the shots fired. First shots were fired April April twelfth, and nobody could penetrate Fort Sumter. For you know, for, for, for four years basically, nobody could penetrate it. It, it, once they knew Sherman was coming, that was the other thing. Once they knew he was coming, they just vacated. Nobody stood <laughs> and fought because he said, "You guys, we're going to give you a heads up. You you should leave, but if you don't, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna find out what yeah, war yeah, we'll is bleed, like." We'll and bleed what did you, they, what, you know? What do you do if you're a rational person? What do you do? Yeah, I'm leaving. Run for the hills. I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting out of Dodge. But <laughs> interesting here. It's interesting here. We were talking about Sherman's record at uh, West at West Point. He wasn't so good at following yeah. orders. Well, here Grant gives them orders: take take your men up by steamboat up to you know meet me in Virginia. And Sherman, sure, ah, no, no, we're gonna fight our way through the Carolinas, and we're gonna make South Carolina pay. Right? Yeah, we're and, make, and you know, Grant even said, uh, I, "Grant even said, I will never give you a, an order again." Basically, he's like, he's like, "I'm not <laughs> you 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 know what you're doing. I'm not gonna. I can't tell you how to do it better. So let me take let me try to get Lee uh, up in north, and you'll you'll meet me at the right time. So yeah, South Carolina, North Carolina, similarly was not one of the latter states to um, to secede. You know, they were pulled in by their neighbor just south. Uh, so he tears through that and then goes up let me, to let Virginia. Me, let me ask has, you. Let me, but let me ask you something, Robert. Have, have you? I ha, I've never read Sherman's memoirs. Have, have you? 
Yeah, I read some excerpts of it. The one, yeah, the one book I have, it's it's called uh, this. This is the book. It, it's like a uh, like a eight hundred page book on his biography. Yeah, thank you, uh, there, Elliot. And um, there's tons of quotes from his memoirs, Andy. So I don't, I I can't say okay. I read. Yeah, know, it would his, be an interesting book. It would be interesting book to read. Problem is, I have a stack of books to be read. That you don't know, decide. I know. But I want to get to we'll Sherman, get to that. Sherman's memoirs. But I just wanted we'll, to say about we'll you know, get to Columbia, that. South Columbia, South Carolina yes. State Capitol burns. Sherman's blamed for it. And sure, I remember what Sherman said in his memoirs was something was something like uh, I don't remember the exact wording, but he said, "If I wanted to burn Columbia, South Carolina, I would have burned it without any compunctions." But I didn't do it. It was it was it was something exactly. Federal General yeah. who said, yeah, who said set fire to bales of uh, bales of cotton or something. But yeah, he said, that he, was their said, I, I would, yes. yeah, I would I would have done it. But I, in this case, he's he, Sherman is just like this blunt truth teller, you know. I would have done it, yeah, sure. But in this case, I you know I didn't do it. <laughs> so I mean, I yeah. you know, a man like yeah. that, you 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 believe him, yeah. Exactly. It's like, you know, gen, uh, a century later, it's Clint Eastwood with the, you know, <laughs> with Scorpio in, in, in Dirty Harry, where, you know, I didn't beat him up. If I did, he, he looks too good, you know, for uh, right, if I beat right. him up, he would look a lot worse. And right. so that's Sherman's point is that his, so yeah. his name, his image, reputation precedes him. And what, another really important point, Andy, is that, so there are two things psychologically going on here from the, from the, the Confederate point of view, this man is indestructible. You know, they, 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 the fear that he instills in them is breaking their spirit. It's hanging by a feather. What about the confidence of his own army? They're invincible. Okay. They are, you know, if we go, you know, up now we're into uh, Virginia by this time. Uh, where he has a meeting with uh, Lincoln, Grant, and there's that fa beautiful, famous uh, painting of the three of them uh, together. And Sherman's the one who's talking <laughs> with, with you know, he's, he, it's, it's amazing because, you know, Lincoln and, and Grant are greater stature, like in, in you know, American history mind, uh, at least to some extent, but, but, but Sherman is the active yeah. one in that painting. And... <clears throat> Well, the they, number let me, let me of just, let me just say let me just say something here, Robert. They were both POTUS. They were both presidents of the United States. Whereas Sherman, as an active Republican, you know, the Republican <laughs> Party wanted to yes. wanted to draft wanted him to, to run for yeah. the presidency. Yeah. And Sherman, in one of the immortal lines of American history, said, yeah. "If nominated, I will not run, and if elected, I will not serve." You think you think Sherman might have had a little animosity towards politicians? <laughs> You want to get yes. involved. You yeah. want to get involved in this in this whole field. That's right. I think they now call that like a Shermanism. That's like right. it's a it's such a famous quote, like he who, that he originated. That whenever people say that, they they give him properly. They give him credit. So if we look at so the war is almost over. It, 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 you know, basically it's April. He he's up in Virginia. Uh, late March into April, the war ends just a couple of days later in Appomattox. But the number of deaths, so he, he leaves Atlanta with 62,000 soldiers. By the time he makes it up to Virginia, there's less than 500 between death, casualties, and missing, uh, just a few hundred, whereas 100,000 at Gettysburg died. Sh uh, um, one of the Cold Harbor was like, in seven, like 17 minutes, there were like 10,000 died. So this yeah, Shiloh, this, Shiloh, Shiloh was a oh, bloodbath. Shiloh, Shiloh similar. I mean, he died, learned, yeah. we could say he learned from Shiloh. We could definitely say he learned from Shiloh that that is not the way to win. It's not about battles. It's about the war. It's about having the moral conviction that we are in the right and, and we don't feel any kind of guilt you know, any, any kind of guilt for doing what we're doing. I mean, imagine how radical that was, that idea was that we are taking the battle to the enemy. We're going into their homes. We're going to destroy everything that they stand for and all this com comfort. That's not a, and, and as you said, Andy, earlier, that's one reason that he is, he, he he's criticized. That's one of the reasons he's criticized, but they don't look at, 
non-loss of life. You know, how many lives he saved on both sides in that, you know, having 62,000 in the beginning and having, you know, more than 60,000 at the end by the time they make it all the way up to Virginia. I mean, that is just yeah, staggering. Yeah. yeah, that is that is absolutely remarkable. I want to know what kind of a, of a man Sherman was. There's a great quote here. Um, yeah. In the, in the, the, in, from Atlanta when the uh, he, he wanted to evacuate, he wanted to evacuate the city. And, you know what he wanted to burn it or uh, or whatever, um, and the city council said to him, you know that it would cause great hardship. The evacuation would cause great hardship to the elderly and women and, and children mm -hmm. and others who bore no responsibility for the war. And listen, and and listen to Sherman's response. This is from his the Wikipedia page. Sherman sent a written response in which he sought to articulate his conviction that a lasting peace would be possible only if the union were restored. And that he was prepared to do all he could to quash the rebellion. Now here's a quote Sherman to the city council of Atlanta. You cannot qualify war in harsher terms than I will. War is cruelty and you cannot refine it. And those who brought war into our country deserve all the curses and maledictions a people can pour out. I know I had no hand in making this war. And I know I will make more sacrifices today than any of you to secure peace. But you cannot have peace and a division of our country. If the United States submits to a division now, it will not stop. But we'll go on until we reap the fate of Mexico, which is eternal war. I want peace and believe it can be only reached through union and, and war. And I will ever conduct war with a view to perfect the perfect and early success. But my dear mm -hmm. sirs, when peace does come, this, this kind of chokes me up. You may call on me for anything. Then will I share with you the last cracker and watch with you to shield your homes and families against danger from every quarter. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it really shows us what, what kind of a man Sherman was. Yeah. Yeah. He what, wanted to preserve what, human life, free human life. Mm -hmm. What sucks. Mm -hmm. But it has to be. Yes. In this case, it has to be. We can't have secession and we can't have slavery. Uh, but mm -hmm. most of all, we, we went to war. We can't have secession. And war is the only no. way. War is the only way to uh, preserve the union. By God, I'm going to make sure I'm going to I'm going to shorten the war. I'm going to I'm going to crush right. the Confederacy mm -hmm. spirit. You know, the, the, the material, mm -hmm. uh, the agricultural ma ma material wherewithal of the Confederacy and its and its spirit. And then, yep. uh, peace. And, and what does he say there? Not those last lines. And then I will do anything, you know, to yeah, to be your yeah. to be your friend Amazing. and be and be your be your ally. Amazing. And Help. so one one quote I have, Andy, about the 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 media. He says, "I think I know what military fame is: to be killed on the field of battle and have your name misspelled in the newspapers." <laughs> Doesn't that remind you of Ayn Rand describing Henry Cameron? You know, they misspell his name and the, the two of his buildings, and and it's like there's no there's no respect, you know, to no no attention to detail here. Let's just you know put the guy's name wrong, and uh, that's right. you know one of the right. things. He so we could talk a little bit about the media though. In his, so one reason he despised them was that they would. They would tell. They would give away secrets. They would find secrets. They, they wanted the sensationalism. They would publish uh, things that that some some of his plans and and uh, the other uh, northern commanders' plans. And he had a thorough distrust, you know, for them. And and I think I think that's important to him to know the proper place. You know, what is freedom of speech and what is what undercuts. A, a specific mission that you're trying to accomplish again to save lives to end this war as quickly as possible so that we can restore peace and then move on with as much loss of human life yeah property destruction yes but not but human yeah you know, with as little uh, loss human life. as and, little loss of civilian life and the guys on my side and the confederates if they if they flee from yeah. Swat Sumter, they're safe right and you know as, as minimal loss of life as uh, human life as possible and truman did the same thing right uh saved dropping the bomb twice saved hundreds yeah. of thousands of 
lives of U.S. Marines and soldiers, mm -hmm. and probably billions of Japanese civilians because the fanatical regime. Yeah, they would never have stop. stopped. Yeah, they they would never have stopped. And and so after the war, he's a celebrity. <clears throat> uh, gets involved. He goes out west um, between Oregon and Santa Fe trails. There's there's definitely some uh, now between the the natives, the Indians. Uh, there are some battles that he oversees. And um, then in 1875, uh, Grant is the president and um, Grant became president. And then Sherman has the idea of writing his memoirs, which is a firsthand account uh, primarily of the Civil War. And um, <clears throat> what does the media do? The media t says, man, he's criticizing, he, he's overly critical of Grant. Grant gets a hold of a copy, reads it, and, he, and he's like, no, everything he's saying is actually true. And gives Grant the idea to write his own memoirs because because Grant, um, it was one of the things that saved him from fi fi financial ruin. So, uh, and I don't know if that had been done before by somebody so popular, you know, to write their own memoirs. And then moves to New York. I think 1880 or so, he moves to New York, falls in love with the city. He had been there many times, but he gets to see Shakespeare. He likes the theater, all these others, you know, this other side of him that is not so well known and uh, eventually dies while in New York, 1891, uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. And one of the pallbearers, Andy, was Johnson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Johnston, the the one who was in, you know, who, who chased him, they chased each other uh, around uh, Chattanooga and Atlanta, and it's kind of prophetic that he he. It was a chilly day for you know February in New York City. Yeah, it was, it was uh, brutally cold chilly. February day mm -hmm. in 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 New York. Yeah, uh, uh, when, uh, and he's carrying, you know, as a pole bear, he didn't wear a hat, and he said if the roles were reversed, Sherman would not have a hat on. And Johnson dies like about a month later. So yeah, that's a uh, that's a that's an amazing story and a sad story that Johnson yeah, is the Paul Bears. First of all, that his Confederate opponent is one of the Paul Bears. That's that's what a sign of yes. respect that is. Uh, yes, so, as I said, was you know so you know his, so he's not wearing the hat because out of respect for, Sh for Sherman's funeral, Johnston's friends tell him put on a hat. It's, it's brutally cold in there. He said no, like you said, Sherman. If Sherman Rose Roy Burr, Sherman would not wear a hat, doesn't wear a hat, comes out with a cold, and a month later dies of pneumonia. I mean, it's yeah. a it's 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 a story of, of great honor, and it's also very sad. But but then on the other hand, yeah. Johnson was probably by 1891, Johnson was probably no spring chicken himself. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, no, I don't, you know, and I don't there were no so. antibiotics yeah. back in the eighteen nineties no. to treat somebody with pneumonia. So uh but yeah, it's a That's story right. of great That's of great right. great respect. You know, for for mil yeah. one military adversary to another, yeah. one military man, to and then his, short his adversary. Shortly thereafter, uh, Elliot, if you could switch over the the slide, please. So, not that long after, there within ten years, Augustus Saint Gaudan makes this gigantic, heroic uh, sculpture of Sherman on his horse with Nike signaling victory in front. Nike, the Andy, Greek, every time the I would Greek god. Nike's towards... the Greek, yeah, Nike's the Greek goddess of victory, right? So it's yes, very appropriate. Yes, yes, holding the leaf, yep, ho holding the the um, the wreath there. And in New York City, I would give walking tours, and this would be the starting place for for carry on students uh, because it's convenient. 59th Street, Fifth Avenue. Uh, yeah, this is this is Central Park, Central right? Park. Grand, Grand, yeah. Grand Army Plaza, Central Park. Yeah, this this is right in the heart of the city. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, but it is just it is monumental. It's heroic. I remember going there with my mother when I was a kid, and uh, and you know get out of the subway and we look at this thing, and I'm like, wow. And one thing she told me is there there are no statues of Sherman in the South. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> I didn't sure. even know who the guy was, but I just saw this this giant of of uh, of a work of art, and they've restored they they painted it gold. Or, several years ago and it's just it's a beautiful it's a place to go in new york city and stand reverently in front of because there there are several other monuments to sherman but this one is like no other and, and appropriate lincoln grant sherman 
nobody nobody else could, I think could match the the big three in terms of of winning the war, uh, you yes. know, uh, ending ending secession, ending uh, yeah. ending the Confederacy, ending the slave society, and of course made it possible upholding the Constitution. Person. Yeah, upholding uh, the Constitution. Uniting the states, upholding the Constitution, yeah. which was the principle. That was the reason for fighting. Constitution is yeah. not a pro-slavery document. They all proved that. No, it was the, the goal was to live up to the ideals of the Constitution. And for that, right. slavery had to be eradicated. Right. The uh and mm -hmm. had to be won on the battlefield uh, in order to yes. give Lincoln the opportunity to push through a Republican Congress, the 13th Amendment. You know, ending ending yes. slavery in, in the United States. So, so Sherman, one of the big three, in uh, you know, in mm -hmm. just terminating mm -hmm. the Confederacy's uh, will to win and bringing an end to the war, and just was big was a genius of uh, what would they call it maneuver maneuver warfare. His 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 strategy yeah, of that's right. You know, you know yeah, man maneuver warfare and, and to total war. You know, total war, yeah, yeah. which I and think he, he called, called it hard war. Hard war. Yeah, he right. hard war. But but the equivalent is total war, which means you have no mercy. You have you go to destroy yeah, you know, the spirit. Yeah, I know I understand. But I, I, I have a, a, a disagreement here because I think total war is the kind of things that the Nazis and the communists did, the Soviets, you know, kill the civilian population, you know, yeah. rape the mm -hmm. women, kill, kill them, whatever. Was Sherman has shoot all of that? I, I, I think Sherman's yeah. own name of hard war. Is, hard is, war? is more appropriate okay yeah, we'll, hard, go, he, we'll he, go with he, that you have to because he, convinced. Called, he did not make and and you know i remember speaking at west point in 90 1995 i think i gave a lecture there on the fountainhead and i remember mm -hmm. you know the i'll tell you one thing robert that was the most physically fit student body i ever i ever lecture to <laughs> <laughs> You know, and there was some, you know, some, some, some officers there as well as, as, as well as yeah. the vets came for the talk. A lot of people, you know, liked Ayn Rand. And, uh, I, I, I said to them in a question, I said, the, the, the United States military of, uh, official policy is we don't make war on civilians. Isn't that right? And, and then the officer said, you know, said, you know, absolutely right. And I think Sherman, that's why, I, that's why I wouldn't call this total war, the totalitarian state okay. the Brutal, brutal mm -hmm. dictators do mm -hmm. that. Uh, make war on the civilian population. Sherman, Sherman did his best to to avoid that. Like you said, he, he warned his guys. You know, we're not going to kill the, the plantation owners. We're not going to rape the women. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to do uh, that kind of stuff. Hard war, he called it. You know, destroy yeah. them, destroy property, destroy the the agricultural fields and everything. But but try try and spare civilian life. You know, as, as much as possible. And uh, Mm -hmm. It's uh, hard war is what he called. It. I think it's appropriate. I think yeah. we would be remiss. We would be remiss if we didn't men at least mention, you know, what, what, years after the war, he was given a speech to a, a military academy at graduation, and that's where mm -hmm. he prob he probably first uttered the phrase "war is hell," which which you know, he is yeah. famous for. You boys go you in know, for all the glory, but I, well, you know, right. right. But, yeah, pay yeah. attention, boys. War is hell, and it's yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, he saw enough right. of That's it, and yeah, for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. And you always know, think this is. Uh, I don't know what year it was when he was speaking at that military academy years after the Civil War. I don't know if it was eighteen seventies, eighteen eighties. But I say when I was reading that, you know, in preparation for this, Robert, you know, I was thinking that what I know about World War One, for example, is there was a lot of jingoistic fervor in various European countries. You know, wow, well, you know, you know, this is glory. It's about glory, and you know, World War One. <laughs> what a horror! You know yeah. that film. That film a year or so ago was it 1917? I think was the 1917. I could I couldn't. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, it shows. It shows what yeah, it shows I, what that trench warfare was like. It was very yeah. it was very powerful, very realistic, and very moving. And, and you know, and it's like it's every I don't know if every generation they, they so many young guys maybe they they there's no such thing as too much testosterone, but there may be such a thing as too little brains. You know, they have a lot of testosterone. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and, totally and two little that. brains, yeah. and two little brains. The testosterone part's good. The lack of brains is not good. But they, there's a lot of people that think war is going to be glory, you know, and and it is. And you know, we saw that on nine eleven. We we saw what war what war looks like. You know, we've been fortunate yeah. in the United States. Generally, war has not been fought on our territory. 
Uh, but war is hell. Sherman's right. Oh, you'd, you'd, you'd hope mankind w- would realize that, you know, and just put in, I mean, put an end to this, you know, and Ayn Rand mm-hmm. put it very nicely. We need, we need a institute, a moral ban on the initiation of force in all, yes. you know, across all, across all issues, all boundaries, mm-hmm. a moral ban on initiation of force, especially by government, uh, and, you know, and, and aggressive warfare. Uh, so you never know one day, Will, will one day mankind learn that lesson? Well, you know, we we mm-hmm. we hope. Mm-hmm. You know, and see, it's interesting because and interesting because you know we take a tough approach to people who attack us, like you know, uh, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and people who attack mm-hmm. us. I would use the full. I'm not mentioning any names. I would use the full might of the U.S. military. Disproportionate, to, yeah, disproportionate yeah, force. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I would use the full might of the U.S. military to to, to bleep them up. But that's in self defense against somebody who attacks you. Right, we never use it to initiate uh, aggression against uh, uh, against somebody else. And that way, you know, we're the peace party. You know, the, we want a moral ban on the initiation of force. And Sherman knew that. Having having gone yeah. through having gone through it, uh, he knew war is hell. War is war is cruel. There's no way to refine it. Mm-hmm. He told the city council mm-hmm. that the, that's why the best thing yeah. we could do is is end it. End yeah. it. Andy, and the- two two points I, I want to jump on. First of all, your talk at West Point, it's another salute for Veterans Day. So uh, thank you uh, again, even for doing that. And I'd like to hear that they're more fit than any other audience that you have. But it's interesting when you That's mentioned Irene, I thought I actually thought you were going to go to her article, The Roots of War. You know, capitalism, you own an ideal, which is it's always some kind of totalitarian. It's always status. It's always that, status. And the South was largely totalitarian when you're enslaving people's lives by law and and by, you know, in fact and in in principle, that's totalitarianism. Yes. And, it, it and not an not... accident. Not an accident that they started opening people's mail. They started confiscating the mail yeah. of white Americans yeah. in, in the Confederacy to make sure there was no abolitionist literature, you know, and, and, and contained. Yeah, amazing. Now that's amazing. that is totalitarianism, for, you know, for sure. Yeah, and Ayn yeah. Rand's right, and you're right. Statism is the mm-hmm. is the cause of war, and uh, mm-hmm. because statists, they could be Nazis, communists, slave owners, you know, military dictators, whatever. Mm-hmm. Their principle is, you know, we we brutalize our own population. You know, we initiate force yeah. constantly against our own population. So there's certainly not going to be any moral compunctions for us to invade, a, invade our neighbor, you know, and initiate, yeah. initiate force against them. Saddam Hussein. Yeah. You know, and my, la- my last, <clears throat> my last um, uh, tip to Ayn Rand is how she describes that it was the free capitalistic North that destroyed the Southern slave-based feudalist South. And... That is why when we he- whenever we hear attacks on capitalism and that it needs to, uh, you know, ha- have guns, all, all of these mis, you know, mis, um, purposely de- deceptive descriptions of it, we have it here. We have the evidence of it here in the United States that it was a free industrialist capitalist North that wiped out slavery, uh, the slavery of the totalitarian, feudal, agrarian, uh, slave-owning South. <clears throat> And that right. fact should be and, heard by everybody. Right. And on this issue, you know, we should give credit to the Brits who were, you know, one of the freest countries on earth, the first the first industrialized capitalist nation, the first mm-hmm. nation with a concerted abolitionist movement, the first nation to abolish the slave trade, the first nation to abolish slavery. Yeah. And the British conducted a worldwide, the power of the Royal Navy con- conducted a worldwide crusade against slavery and the and the slave trade. It wasn't one of the dictators or monarchies or communists or not or fascist regimes that did that it was the it was the right. free one of the freest nations on earth one of the most industrialized capitalist nations on earth the british and mm-hmm. so yeah yeah capitalism is based on individual rights yeah. and abolitionism is based on individual rights capitalism right. and abolitionism are moral philosophic siblings they yeah. come from the capitalism and that's and the point this is a moral this is a moral uh, i'm sorry andy yeah, as John Nelson and abolitionism. Has, Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm sorry. As John Lewis says, you know, the moral impetus. That's the title of of his TOS article, uh, Sherman, and that the, the, the so the moral case is the you know if there's a takeaway 
here. It's that Sherman was in the moral right and he went through with to total conviction to that end. And we are the beneficiaries to this day of his actions. Absolutely. And so on Veterans Day, I think we can <laughs> salute you know, one of our greatest veterans, one of our greatest military commanders, William yes. Tecumseh Sherman. Thank you, General Sherman. And I want to uh, wish everybody, wish everybody, Robert and everybody out there in Hero Land to lead a her more heroic life, have a heroic day. And we will, will we, we will be See back next week, next week yes. on the Hero <laughs> Show. Bye-bye.